This is the Dashboard Media. This interview you're about to see is on the Morning Cross Fire that hosted the special advisor to the president on media, Femi Adeshino. Femi Adeshino on this interview addresses pressing national issues. Enjoy. Uh, also, um, just recently, $311 million of Bacha loot has been uh, recovered, which you say uh, will be um, used for construction of Lagos Ibano Expressway. Um, I, I want to have this conversation with you because Lagos wants to know this. Between 1999 and 2015, about $5 billion was recovered, which the government is yet to account for. A freedom of information request demanding records that shows the exact amount of funds looted by Abacha and the spending of recovered funds so far was sent to the Attorney General. And two months ago by Serap, uh, th that was two months ago by Serap. Now, this is the reply. Let me, let me just give you the reply the Attorney General gave. He said, and I quote, we have searched our records and the information on the exact amount of public funds stolen by Abacha and how recovered loot was spent from 1999 to 2015 is not held by the ministry. That the ministry cannot say much about it. We seem to have a problem with accountability, especially for public funds, expenditure of public funds. What guarantee do we have this time, Mr. Additional, that these monies will be spent appropriately? Well, the guarantee we have is that it's a different government made of different people. And one of the strengths of this government is transparency and accountability. Before the money ever came in, it had been stated that it would be spent to complete the Gosibana Expressway, to complete Abuja Kano Expressway, and to complete the second Niger Bridge. Mm. That already is accountability even before the money came in. And eventually, at the end of it, when this government is winding down, the public will sure have access to how the money has been expended. You can't compare one government with the other because they are different uh, institutions. Mm. Between 1999 and 2015, this government is not answerable for it, particularly the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation, since it's not a custodian of how those funds was, was spent. I want to, you know, as a school principal, I run a school. And any time I come on assembly ground, I ginger the spirit of my students. I want to ask Mr. Semi Adeshinon, and if he doesn't have the answer, I want him to encourage the president to come out and speak to us. If we could just ask your question. Yes, when is the president coming out to address us, as in to have a media chat with the press, so that from there he can <laughs> speak to us? Okay, Ibikunle, thank you for calling me. Mr. Adeshinon. Thank you. Um, I just want to encourage Mr. Bikuli not to continue to sound like a broken record. Um, when this COVID thing began, President should talk to us, President should talk to us, President should talk to us. He has had three national broadcasts within about a month. What else do they want? What else do they want? Some people think because either you elected a president or you didn't elect him, you must lead your president by the nose. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. The fact that you have elected a man does not mean then you begin to order him around. The president will do whatever is good for the country at any given time. Mr. Adeshino, isn't the president elected by the people? Isn't he responsible to the people? He is quite responsible to the people, but the people don't have to lead him around by the nose. That's what I'm saying. Thank my, you. My question to you is this, sir. You, from your, you said people don't have to order the president around to do this and that. Don't you think, sir, on a moral ground, that the president's supposed to have a media chat where you'll be able to answer questions, especially on this present crisis on ground, instead of giving us a pre-recorded a, a, a broadcast once in a while. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ladipo. Mr. Thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a matter, it's a matter of opinion and a matter of style. If the president chooses to adopt the broadcast style, that is his style. If 
you recall school days, depending on what you studied, in the stylistics class, you are told that style is idiosyncratic. What does that mean? It differs from person to person. That is the style of this president. Another president could come, and he will adopt a different style. So the style that this president has adopted, let's accept it and let it suffice for us. There was a time they say he was not speaking. And then within a month, he made three broadcasts. What else do people want? Uh, Samuel, go ahead with your question. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Shumi. Thank you. Actually, I want to ask, uh, why is it that our president, the, his speech is not always live speech? Like the last speech that he gave was leaked. I want to know why it was leaked. Even as he was reading it on the television, I've already read it on the internet. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. Mr. Alishino. Well, that, 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 that has been explained. He, he said, why is it that uh, the president's speech, you know, is never live? Yeah, yeah, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that. There are two things in what he asked. Right. He said, why, why is it that he had already read it on the internet? What he read on the internet was not the authentic version of the broadcast. It was an early version that a mischief maker got hold of and released on social media. And there were so many discrepancies between that version and the final version. And then, why is it not live? Not all broadcasts are live. Not all broadcasts are live. Presidential broadcasts are really live. They are really live. They are pre-recorded one or two hours before broadcast. Presidential broadcasts are really live. Uh, so Mr. Vish before we move move away from that, I have a question that the last caller asked earlier, and I want to uh, let, let's um, expatiate further, Mister Dishino. Who is this person you tagged, public enemy, or the enemy <laughs> of this state? Who is this the, person? The, the, the security agencies are working on it, and uh, Nigerians will be brought up to speed eventually because that person will have his day in court. Mm. Is this person connected to the presidency in whatever way? Because I'm wondering, no, Mr. Adishino, no. hold on, Mr. Adishino, I'm wondering if if you and your team uh, gathered together to put a, a speech together, how did it get out from your team? It must have no, gotten no, out from no. your team. You you also didn't, you also probably didn't read what I wrote right. or, or, or interviews I had granted earlier. Presidential broadcasts are generated from the relevant agencies or ministries or parastatals. They don't, they are not necessarily generated with, from within. Emmanuel, I'm calling from Ikorodu in Lagos. All right, you've got a question. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, honestly, it is, it is very important that we inform here that a president that was elected by Nigerians eh, can be called to be spoken to Nigerians at any point in time. And it beats my imagination that each time you are being interviewed, the way you speak to Nigerians, you speak to Nigerians as though Nigerians are just used tissue paper. These things are, these things are, not, are not good at all. Mm. You understand? And well, for you to come here way, with your level of education that is the way you to tell... See yourself. If you choose to see yourself as used tissue paper, then I can't help you. Okay. That is the way you choose to see yourself. Mm. But Nigerians are dignified, they are people of dignity. But if you see yourself as a used tissue paper, I can't help you. Now, my question is this, sir. Thank you. You know, there's a uh, doctor in Lagos, Ogo, and Abuja. Now, the Minister for Military Affairs, instead of uh, sharing money in Lagos, he was sharing money after Abuja, you see Meduguri, you see Casina. Why not in Lagos? That is my question. And again, finally, this politics they were talking about, they increased from 2 million in, to 3 million. In the last three years of the Supreme they increased by 1 million. Now, we did not, we did not see this in, in the South West here or South East. Why? That's my question, sir. Thank you, Prince Wise, for calling. It's additional. Yeah. 
Yeah, please, can you just summarize his question for me? Again? Yeah, he wanted to know why the uh, Honorable Minister uh, of Humanitarian Affairs and uh, Social Development uh, went to uh, sp shared money, the palliatives, uh, the uh, SIB program, in other places apart from Lagos, which is, of course, the epicenter of um, uh, the COVID. Uh, well, I, I, you know, I wouldn't know because if it's done by the Minister for Humanitarian Affairs, she will be the best person to answer that question. Mm. All I know is that the minister is responsible to the president. And at the end of all this, she will submit a report to the president. That is the point in which I then put comment on it. Yeah, good morning, Sheriff. Good morning to you. Yeah. Um, sorry, I just want to say something to Mr. Deshinon. Yeah, this is national broadcast and the whole Nigeria is listening to you. I don't see the reason why you should talk to us with all this ego and arrogance. Sincerely, you are speaking with Nigerians, so you have to at least give us some respect. You are answerable to us. Yeah, we elected the president and you are appointed by him. So whatever it is that we are asking or they are talking, well, I mean, talking to you about, you should be able to at least answer us with respect. Take, saying someone is sounding like breaking record or um, someone is, uh, they refer to himself as social paper and you can't help that. You don't have to talk to us like that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why this arrogance and everything. I don't know. All right, Luan. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Mr. Uh, just congratulations to Lua. If that's the way he sees himself, he's welcome to. Mm. Thank you. Welcome, Richard. Yeah. My direct question to Mr. Adishino is that uh, what has happened to Dazuki and this other shite guy? Why is Boise holding on to them despite uh, court judgment on the on, on, on their on their on their release? Why is he holding on to them? All right, Richard. All yeah. right, Richard. And, uh, Richard, I'm sorry. We need to make this very snappy and quick, Mr. Adishino. Yes, thank you. Let, let me respond to the Edward guy that first spoke. 2023 is another year for election. He can run. Who says he can't become president? So when he runs and he becomes president, he can then adopt his own style. Our president has a style, and that is the style he is using. Uh, the other one, uh, Dasuki and, uh, and uh, Zach Zaki. The attorney general has spoken on this many times, many times, many times. And what the attorney general says suffices because he's the chief law officer of the country. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Facebook very quickly where we're streaming live as we speak. I'll take a few questions. Then Mr. Additional can um, respond to them. Olaiwala Tosi Omolola on Facebook says, um, please, what's stopping us from digging into the books and figuring out how the Abacha loot repatriated before this administration was spent. Is that an impossibility, Mr. Additional? No, no, I don't think it's an impossibility. Uh, I think it can be done. If a forensic audit is carried out... Are we planning to do such? Can... Is there any plan to do well, such? Well, well, maybe the finance ministry or other people uh, in that sector, mm. if it's considered a priority by government, why not? Mm. For the NDDC is going through forensic audits now right. and is spanning over many years. So if government decides to do a forensic audit on how the Abacha loot repatriated between 1999 and 2015 was spent, I'm sure it can be done. Indeed. Let's get back to the telephone. Hello, good morning to you. Good morning. On to Chima. Good morning. Chima, right? Yeah, Chima from Pesa. Okay, Chima, go on ahead. Quickly, um, I want to ask uh, Mr. Adeshina this morning. The style of the president. He's, he's, he's talked about it a couple of times this morning. Now, Nigerians, the enlightened Nigerians, we are not cool with the style of the president. Always talk to us. Talk to us. Engage us via a media chat. We have questions to ask the president directly. This is not, not, this is not to play the devil's advocate. I'm talking to her about them, Mr. Adeshino. Pass our message to the president. Nigerians wants to have a chat with you. Your style is good, yes, but it's not cool with Nigerians. Thank you. Thank you, Chima. Mr. Lechino. Well, uh, we, we, we seem to be going around in circles on this matter. And the position is that the president 
has adopted his own style. And that is what we have for now. Another president can come and adopt another style. He will have a right to it. Hmm. All those who are clamoring, talk to us, talk to us, talk to us. He didn't talk earlier. They were clamoring. He has had three broadcasts. They still are clamoring. It shows the head or tail. You never win with some people. Hmm. If you talk to them every day, they say you are talking too much. You don't talk enough, they say you are not talking enough. So, head or tail, you never win. Go on, Sylvester. We're listening to you. Yeah. Now, I, I wanted to, uh, first of all, commend you for bringing Femi Additional to us Nigerians to ask him questions and probably get answers. But it looks as if we're actually fighting. It's like a fight we're having on radio with him, <laughs> well, which is unfortunate because uh, Nigerians are upset and they have the right to be upset. He's more like a professional, so he should be able to know how to handle people that are angry. That aside... I also wanted to ask this question. Now, the uh, I wanted to ask the reason why it's just now that they want to bring up the issue of implementing the uh, the uh, or, or report. report. God bless you. Mm, yes. Mm. Why is it now that there's a lot of crisis? We're not even sure of how we're going to manage ourselves as citizens with this social distancing and everything. Um, this is coming up. Is it not coming rather at the time where we have real crisis? Thank you. All right, Sylvester. The solution of very quickly because we're out of time. Yes, I didn't quite get the question. It was asking why we want to implement a RSI report now when we have crisis on our hands, basically. Yes, uh, well, uh, the, what, what is the report meant to achieve? It's meant to reduce government expenditure. So, what time should we reduce this, uh, government expenditure? Rather than now, uh, things are down. Economy is down. Income is down. So this is the time to reduce government expenditure. 